Hello again, Tara, and welcome back to TCM. So happy to have you here. Yeah, I'm having so much fun. This is the second night of our Haze Gaze special spotlight. We just saw Scarface from 1932, and now this is the second gangster film that we're going to show, but it's quite different because it came out after the production code was in full effect. It's The Roaring Twenties from 1939, directed by Raoul Walsh, starring James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. And if you will, it's the slightly sanitized version of a gangster movie, is it not? It is. And let me tell you that in 1939, the Hayes office didn't want to have anything to do with gangster movies ever again. They'd done a pretty good job of like kind of eking them out. <laughs> and um, the idea that it was going to come back, they were like, please no. <laughs> but Jack Warner says, hey, look. I've got a really good story here. This is from a New York reporter who was on the Broadway beat, Mark Hellinger. And so this is really going to be authentic. We're going to use newsreel style footage. So it's kind of like a scripted documentary. Yeah. How about we do that? It's a museum piece. Yes. Well, that's what's interesting because one thing you learn about the production code is that one of the things that they didn't want shown were any inner workings of criminal activity. And this is a movie about three men who return from World War I and need to make a living during Prohibition and they get into bootlegging. So you're seeing the inner workings of bootlegging and associated racketeering, but because Prohibition was over, this exactly. was seen as a historical piece. Right, I mean, I will tell you at first, that was uh, not something that won him over initially, uh, okay. Joseph Breen, who ran the, the code at that time. But eventually he's like, okay, I see it. And so yeah, you know, racketeering and this idea of uh, uh, you know, liquor was legal, so why not? And it's fascinating to see how bootlegging operations work. So that's one great reason. Another thing, though, that was a sticking point was the Tommy gun. So they were like, we got to put the Tommy gun. I mean, that's the whole reason mobsters are able to gain power. We have to. And the Hayes office is saying, no, we are not going to do that. And the code actually strictly forbids it. I mean, they put language in. American gangsters cannot be shown using firearms, you know, and specifically using the Tommy gun. So the way they get around it is that they say, OK, what we're going to do is we're going to show the criminals with handguns. We'll show the police with Tommy guns. And then there's a big shot where you just see the Tommy gun close up come around. But you don't see who is shooting it. Wow. Could be either one. And then, of course, they have a voiceover like saying, and this was the, the evil and the scourge of how it happened. And so through that technique, they were able to get the Tommy gun in. It just shows you how creative, let's say, these filmmakers had to be in this time frame to work around all of these restrictions. Yeah, they really upped their game. And I mean, they, you know, this film, The Roaring Twenties, is considered one of the best movies of 1939, which is really a statement. And so you have to think about the fact that 1939, look where we are from the code. It had been around for five years. And yeah, everybody kind of like muddled around for a while and they found their way through and, and gave us the best year that movies have ever seen. And from the outset, you get the sense that this is the glossier version, right? The opening credits are very polished. You have all these big names, James Cagney, Humphrey Bogart. And also, I think the fact that these men are returning soldiers, yeah. it kind of makes it more palatable, I would imagine. Maybe that helped it get through the censors as well, is that, yeah, these guys are doing bad things, but they're war heroes who have, who have come back, and this is just how they are trying to get by. Yeah. Interestingly, though, British Columbia refused to show the movie for that reason, because they thought that uh, a soldier coming back, you know, and not finding work kind of was flew in the face of the War Act. So they said it couldn't show there. And I think it was banned in the UK as well. Yeah. So it's interesting to see which international territories had specific problems with things that maybe this country didn't. Mm -hmm. It's still a great movie, though. So let's take a look from 1939, starring James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. Here's The Roaring Twenties. Next on TCM, the bachelor father, then bachelor mother, and later, the sin of Nora Moran. TCM casts the first stone tonight. <laughs> 